Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're back with another build from the Lazy Machinist website. This time, we're taking on the V-Block, and I whipped this guy up in Fusion 360 instead of OpenSKit. The reason I chose Fusion 360 this time around is I wanted to play around with the thread functionality a little bit. And as you can see here, we have six threaded holes. Before we jump into that, one of the things I want to kind of call your attention to a little bit as you start working with prints is, you know, number one, the scale of the print. Now, one of the things you'll notice here, this is not the scale, and as I've got this laid out here, you'll notice that these are different sizes from what the actual print is because it's a representative type scale to give you perspective of the object rather than being absolute in, in, in uh, uh, physical dimension, if you will. So again, you know, the dimensions here for the various pieces are accurate, but they don't represent the exact size itself or into some sort of ratio. So with that be out, being out of the way, um, I kind of want to get into the design a little bit. So I, I found this really interesting and a lot of fun to put together. So again, I'll show a little bit of the Fusion 360 stuff up in the corner and in Fusion 360. I created this as basically two bodies, um, the main body here, the receiving body, and then the top bracket. And one of the things, as I mentioned, I chose Fusion 360 because I wanted to experiment with the threads down here. Now, you'll notice that these are a little bit coarse here. One of the things I did while I did apply threads in, in Fusion 360, I did chase these with a quarter 20 tap, and that's why you're kind of seeing maybe a little bit of the roughness here. And plus, I've been putting bolts through here and playing with it. Um, but one of the things I want to point out, if you're using Fusion 360 to do threads and you apply threads, uh, typically it does a cosmetic thread and you have to go into the settings and actually tell it to render the threads or else you just, uh, you know, get, get a blank hole. Now, I made that mistake myself in the first one I did. I, I, I designed it all up, sent it to print. There are no threads and I'm like, what the heck? And now I'm not Lars Christensen when it comes to Fusion 360. So I went back and I went, oh. You know, now this mistake, I forgot to render the thread. So just a little bit of a pointer. So if you're new to Fusion 360 and you want threads, you have to make sure they're rendered. But they did come out very well. Now I want to give you also a few other pointers with regards to this and anything else you're doing with threads. Uh, if you're going to do that, you need to have a pretty good resolution. I printed this with a 0.6 nozzle at 0.2 layer height. If I really wanted to get, uh, you know, really nice with the threads, I probably would have went with 0.1. But since this is more of a demo than anything else, 0.2 is fine. Uh, the other thing is the number of walls you want to have, again, to be able to, because you're going to have to chase this with a tap no matter what. I've never done threads where I haven't had to chase them with a tap. And with that, one of the things, you want to have some extra, extra wall thickness. So I went with three walls, three shells, however you want to put it. So I had enough for the tap to really bite into because one of the things, typically with the plastic, it does contract. And so the hole is a little bit smaller, and so you have to rim it out now in the future i'm going to do another video talking a little bit more some tips and tricks to tapping plastic but that'll come in a future video but one of the things i want to share with you guys fusion 360 does a very good job rendering threads which can be 3d printed so pretty impressive and i think as material science improves and you know it, it's going to get a lot better now this is just simply pla um i think i found a, you know depending upon how you work like ped g and even abs work better than uh, or at least been my experience better than pla but you can do pretty good stuff with some fairly fine threads now the other pieces i want to kind of call your attention uh, to a little bit of a few of the things on the blueprint now because that's what this is a little bit about so you know when I covered out the bench block in an earlier episode it was how can we use 3d printing as a stepping stone to CNC machine or commercial machine operation and part of it is being able to get this drawing into a CAD into a cam and now for uh, production and, and so as you can see here again here's a good representative representation if I can spit it out so I've got the prints I took this into Fusion 360 I rendered it through Cure I sliced it and then I 3D printed it out now I could have uh, also ran this through a cam program and cnc this uh, on you know a three to five access machine obviously three access machine to take a little bit more work but very much doable with this uh, 
However, one of the things I want to show is, is, is about some of the designs. Now, one of the things I found interesting about this is the overlap or lack of an overlap of this piece. So if you really take a look here, if we see this piece, you know, we're at 0.99 and then we also have uh, here 0.4 and then obviously this is representative since there's a symmetry here of 0.4. This is a little bit short of the 1.8. Um, so it's not quite the same size and also the hole diameter is a little bit larger to pass these quarter 20 bolts through where it's received into a smaller hole. Now again, these are these are minor nuances and if you guys are old hat and design, you know, yeah, you you figured that out. But what I'm really speaking to is some of the folks that that are looking at getting into this, looking at using this as a platform to maybe become a machinist, get into CNC machining. Just kind of some of the things to look for in in the print because what you might do is look at this and go this doesn't really look right, but it is correct because of the way that these pieces are designed to mate together and what is the end function. Like one of the other pieces that I'll point out, so again, if we look at material here, this is meant to be made out of uh, 4140. Now, I made it out of plastic. So when that lazy machinist designed this up, you know, he intended it to be made out of metal and I made it out of plastic. So his structural representation is, is going to be a little bit different than what I probably need for plastic. And that's something to keep in mind, whether it's aluminum or steel or, or whatever type of material that you're going to with a design uh, may not be totally ambidextrous because one of the pieces that I kind of want to call out is this space right here. Now for steel, there's plenty of room right here because you're not going to have it deforming and pressing against this side area here, but you are in plastic. So again, some of these little details are really important to keep in mind, especially if you want to go to a commercial product. Now, again, you know, this is one of the neat things in Tinkercad. You can design up a lot of cool widgets and koozies and all kinds of other neat stuff. But really, when it comes down to brass tacks and you want to take a product commercial, details are where it's really made. And, and that's why, again, I'm doing these episodes, drawing from these blueprints, giving you some good examples because because that lazy machinist you can see his real name right here i'm not going to try pronouncing it has done an excellent job uh, of really taking some good examples of real world pieces and rendering them in blueprints that we can take a look at how do they actually work uh and and when we take these into a cad package how will it work in the cad package and how maybe we have to adapt it so my point out of all this rambling is um I, I might, you know, when I designed this, I wanted to match his drawings exactly. If I was going to go back and I was uh, intentionally designing for plastic and I wanted this to yield better performance out of plastic, I would have changed some of the dimensions on this to accommodate the change in the materials. So again, another point to keep in mind. So if somebody comes to you with some prints like this and says, hey, this was, this was done in metal and I want to do it in plastic, you know, can you, can you make this work? You know, the first thing you need to think about is how do you adapt to that new material um, instead of just going with the steel because again this will fail fairly quickly because there's a lot of force when we go to put this bolt in uh, so we take a lot of force against the side especially if when we put tension on it um, now one of the things i did print out two of these um, these these are the same just instantiated twice and printed twice but this really came out cool because what we can do is we can uh, take and put the bolts in this way and the bolts go in really smooth especially after chasing the chasing it with the tap so we can go this way uh, or we can flip this around and we go this way and again th this is something you kind of want to think about in the design now I just happen to have these nylon bolts these uh, you know with the uh, thumb heads on them laying around um, and, and you know his print looks like it has a similar, but you know look at the look at the ratio of the diameter of the bolt itself to the head, and now look at the diameter of my shaft to my head here, and obviously this is much bigger in ratio than it is on his drawing. So there's going to be a problem when I come to tighten it down in this orientation. So again, something to think about. 
what you know what are you going to use for fasteners in this will those fasteners work so just again the devil really is in the detail when you start looking at doing some of these things commercially so anyways i'll throw this up on thingiverse this is a, a sort of a practical um uh uh, widget, if you will. So I intend on printing some of these out actually in uh, PEG, uh, because what you can do is you can clamp these to a table using toe clamps against here. And because that's also the other thing that I would probably do is, um, and probably will do in the ones I print out, is make this base a little bit larger, because again, this is meant for metal toe clamps to go on here, but there's not a lot of room. So what I intend on doing is spreading this out and maybe a future version and putting this on 30 millimeter centers so I can use this uh, in my CNC because you know what this is intended is you can take round stock cinch it in here and hold it down for machining purposes so anyways uh, you know I, I, I'm really impressed with the work that this guy's done and put out there and you know uh, shared it with us for free uh, so definitely kudos to the lazy machinist and again I'll have this out on uh, Thingiverse if you want to get it um, and mess around with it so anyways hopefully you found this video interesting kind of continuing our little bit of saga in blueprint to 3d printed object to maybe becoming a machinist to creating commercial goods so if you found this interesting give it a big thumbs up don't forget to hit the bell over there actually you got to go down the bell simply a reminder and the swag shops up in the corner so a lot of cool swag out there get your swag on for the 3d maker space and we'll see you guys in the next video where we do some more stuff like this cheers Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.